What's going on, everybody? This is Brian Mazik, a.k.a. Unique Mazik. I am the hardest working man in sports and gaming. And I'm talking to you today here with Operation Sports. And I am super excited about the introduction of the stadium creator feature in MLB The Show 21. And one of the things I'm really looking forward to is seeing all of the custom ballparks that people start to create. So obviously, and I you know that people are going to create some stuff that doesn't exist. And I'm looking forward to that too. Some old school, some new school, crazy technology kind of ballparks. But I'm really looking forward to people bringing up some old ballparks that, you know, have been demolished or aren't in use anymore and aren't in MLB The Show uh, 20 or 19 or any of the previous versions. So I made a little bit of a list to break down the 15 ballparks I'm most looking forward to seeing. Let's start off with and I'm not going to rank these. So these are just all parks that I just want to see. And there are other ones. So feel free to put in the comment section if you feel like there's some ballparks that I left out. But I'm going to start off with Arlington Stadium. The old Texas Rangers ballpark. They played there from 1972 to 1993. It was torn down. Um, I have pretty much most of my young memories of the Texas Rangers came from Arlington Stadium. Got watching guys like Juan Gonzalez and Buddy Bell and uh, just Ruben Sierra, Julio Franco, Nolan Ryan, watching all of them play at Arlington Stadium. That just really, that really is that first real memories of the Texas Rangers for me. Yvonne Rodriguez, the, the ballpark had pretty standard dimensions, so you won't get like a crazy thing. There's 330 down both the left field and the right field lines, 400 uh, feet to straightaway center field. So it's not one of those ballparks that you're going to get like a crazy dimension sort of a thing. But if you are a baseball fan that dates back to like the 70s, 80s and the early 90s, you can appreciate Arlington Stadium being in the game. Next up is the Houston Astrodome. So if you go back as a sports fan, uh, this stadium was opened in 1965 and uh, it closed in 1999, but it's still standing. You probably not only remember the Houston Astros playing there, but also the Houston Oilers who ended up being the Tennessee Titans. So we're talking Earl Campbell, Bum Phillips, Billy White Shoes Johnson, all of those guys for the Oilers at that time. Uh, Warren Moon, um, those were uh, some of my favorite football teams. But in the Astros, we're looking at Mike Scott, Nolan Ryan, second Nolan Ryan reference. Um, J.R. Richard, Enos Cabell, Jose Cruz, all of those guys, uh, Phil Garner, all played for the Astros back when their home uniforms used to look like a Aldi bag. <laughs> so this uh, stadium was dubbed the eighth wonder of the world, and it's the first ever domed stadium in the major leagues and it's first dome stadium constructed period i believe um and whether or not you may not know this but the construction of the astral dome was actually instrumental in getting the major getting major league baseball to actually award houston a franchise so the the plans of the stadium and everything were shown to the uh shown to the major leagues or mlb uh back in the early 60s and they were so impressed with the structure and the stadium they wanted to have major league baseball there and to be quite honest i never thought it was a great place for baseball uh i even used to hate watching the cubs play the astros there it just always seemed dark on television but i remember them and they had some really strong teams in the 80s early 80s especially so and it was known for being a pretty large park but you mean down the lines uh well they actually brung the fences in a little bit because when it was originally created it was 340 down uh, left field line 330 down the right field line 406 to straightaway center but they brung the fences in and it was 330 down both lines in a straight 400 feet to straightaway center field it was still pretty much known as a pitcher's park and they had dominant pitching during that time so um uh, nolan ryan actually threw his fifth no hitter there I just i actually learned that doing research for this particular uh video and also willie mays hit his 500th home run there so there's some historic stuff that went on in the astrodome and i don't think it's i mean you gotta you, you gotta create the astrodome that's one thing though this is the first mention of a dome stadium in this video 
we didn't get a confirmation that you can actually make domes so i mean all i would think they would do is that whether if you had a retractable roof or not you could still kind of get it done but yeah that's a one question that we still need to get answered as, as far as the whole stadium creator feature is concerned the next ballpark is candlestick park right now candlestick park to me looks a little similar to you know where the giants play now but it, it's it, it it's really just more about color scheme right now candlestick park was known for its swirling rent winds um had a really pretty large capacity once they you know were done with it it got demolished in 2015 uh but the giants stopped playing there in 99 they could hold 57,000 plus in the stadium and the wind patterns just used to be crazy in candlestick you would watch a game there and with pop flies in the foul territory and the ball would just get taken away uh the great 49ers teams played here we're talking about bill walsh joe montana steve young jerry rice played a bunch of their games there at candlestick park um and this is another park that got the fences brought in it used to be 330 down the lines 420 to straightaway center field then it was 335 down the uh, left field line 330 down the right field line and 400 to straightaway center field but just a lot of history in uh candlestick park so if you go back to 89 with the earthquake series um that is one of the things that that team that giants team with will clark uh really you know stands out hated that team because they beat my cubs in the 89 playoffs uh but those giant teams they had some really good teams around that time and all the way back i mean the park opened up in 1960 so there's tons of stuff there they won a world series like in 80 like i mentioned in 89 and 1962 the all-star game was there in 61 and 84 eddie matthews 500 home run was there willie mays 3000th hit was there um willie mccovey hit uh hit his 521st home run there um it's just a lot of stuff there and barry bonds in the 96 season we really need barry bonds in the game you guys we need to just do like some sort of whole steroid amnesty thing and just like get everybody in the game we can do steroid gambling amnesty just get rid of all that crap and just pete rose project Clemens, barry bonds everybody just put them in the game anyway but he had a 40 40 season in 1996 uh at candlestick park so um candlestick park is definitely one i want to see people create next up exhibition stadium and i'm gonna say some stuff about some of these parks and you're gonna be like based off of what you said why do you even want it and exhibition stadium is one of them exhibition stadium was like the blandest park you will ever want to see it's where the toronto blue jays played from 77 to 89 it's also where the toronto argonauts used to play in the cfl to talking about doug flutie um 330 down the left field line, 330 down the right field line, 410 to straightaway center field. So we had to hit it pretty good to get it out of straightaway center. AstroTurf, which is something I should have mentioned when I was talking about the Astro Dome, which is that um, that term, AstroTurf, actually was birthed there with the Astro Dome. So, um, but yeah, this park was demolished in 1999, 10 years after the, the Jays played their last game there. Um, and again, this was another stadium that was built for the purpose of attracting an MLB team. And they got that done. And the Blue Jays, you know, were able to take off and be a solid team. They didn't start winning, really winning, until they moved to Sky Dome, which was a few years after that. Um, but, you know, well, in 89 is when they moved to the Sky Dome. But, you know, the, the, the exhibition stadium they didn't, didn't get a chance to see the Blue Jays' best years. Uh, and like I said, it, as you can see from some of these pictures, it was pretty bland looking. Just, I don't know. As a kid, having not ever like traveled anywhere and, you know, just judging off like Exhibition Stadium and another stadium that's going to be on this list. I just thought Canada was bland looking because when I was a kid, this was my only idea or concept of Canada. But Exhibition Stadium is definitely one I would like to see in the game. It's just, I guess, because it's part of the whole childhood baseball experience next we got ebbets field now i'm not old enough to have seen anything from ebbets field so let's not do the old jokes here but it is a legendary park brooklyn dodgers come on we just i mean jackie robinson i mean broke broke the keller barrier here 
they won 55 million World Series. I mean, 1916, 20, 41, 47, 49, 52, 53, 55, 56. Well, at least we're in the World Series during those years. Um, Roy Campanella won three MVPs here. Um, 40 home runs from Duke Snyder from 53 to 57. Johnny Vandermeer threw a no-hitter um, here. This was part of his back-to-back -back no hitters, I believe. Um, four homer game by Gil Hodges was in Ebbets Field. Just I couldn't even begin to tell you all of the crazy stuff that went now. This park underwent a pretty significant change from the way it was originally from a dimension standpoint to where it fit to where it finished. 419, now this was when it was built. 419 down the left field line, 301 down the right field line. That's a really drastic difference from foul pole to foul pole. 450 to straightaway center field. So that was absolutely like, unless you were a left-handed power hitter, you were gonna have a real hard time jacking the ball out of the ballpark at Evans Field. But when they changed things, 348 down the left field line, which is still pretty far for a left field foul pole. I mean, for yeah, for a left field foul pole. 393 to straightaway center, which we're talking about chopping off 57 feet to straightaway center field. That's significant. And then 297 down the right field line. So now we're talking, now left-handed hitters are having a ball at Ebbets Field. So I felt like those dimensions would just be really cool to play uh, with uh, in MLB The Show. And plus, just to reconstruct something so historic and just meant so much to baseball. It's really kind of crazy that, you know, I know there's probably all sorts of licensing things or whatever, but Ebbets Field should be in MLB The Show. Next up, we're going to go back to a dome. We're going to talk to Seattle, though, the King Dome. King Dome, I got, I got one name for you. And there's more than just this one name. But when I say King Dome, I think of King Griffey Jr. And that's just what it is. 50 home run seasons in 97, 98, you know, steroid free. And I'm not a real big, you know, guy to try to, you know, beat down all the guys who have ever been attached to steroids. 330 down the left field line, 410 the straightaway center field, 330 down the right field line. Um, wasn't a super colorful whatever type of park, but the color scheme of the team and then having one of the greatest stars of all time, Ken Griffey Jr. out there in the center field. It's just you can't create the King Dome and just not feel like some type of way when you see it. I want to see the King Dome created in MLB The Show. Be really dope. All right, let's go to the next park, which we got to come back home for this one. Now, I am much more of a Cubs fan than a White Sox fan. I'm not one of those people that believes that you have to hate one if you love the other. Do not hate the White Sox. I never have. And I have a lot of great memories about Oak Mr. Park. It was uh, opened in uh, two, um, I'm sorry, 1910, July of 1910, closed in 1990. They demolished it in 1991, built now the park, the new park across the street, which is now guaranteed Ray Field. Now they did bring the fences in quite a bit from where it was when it was originally built, but 347 down the lines and 407 the straightaway center field. Depending on the wind uh, on that particular day, it could be a hitter's park. Depending, you know, it could be a drastic pitcher's park. It just really kind of depended on the wind because if you know anything about Chicago, it gets like that. But the White Sox, I mean, they went through all kinds of uniform changes. A bunch of crazy stuff went on when Bill, Bill Vec was the owner. They had demolition night. They had they played in shorts. Crazy stuff went on at the All Star uh, at the uh, at Comiskey Park. They had the All Star game there in '33, '50, and in '83. The '83 All Star game. I'm giving away my age a little bit here. The '83 All Star game is the first All Star game that I actually have memories of. I remember, if I'm not mistaken, Fred Lynn won the MVP. And it was just crazy great to be able to watch that on television. But World Series in 17, 18, 19, and 1959. Uh, 798 consecutive games straight by Nellie Fox at second base. Also, the American League color barrier was broken at Old Comiskey Park by Larry Doby in 1947. So that's a little known thing because obviously... Uh, Jackie Robinson gets all of the attention for breaking the color barrier, much deserved. 
but that was in the National League. The American League came after that, and it was Larry Doby, and his debut was there at Comiskey Park. Uh, he was playing for the Cleveland Indians at the time. So just a super ridiculous, just historic ballpark. We're talking about the movie, the Black Sox scandal and all that. All of this stuff is related and around um, this park. So um, it's just, you know, it, it's too important to history. I can't wait to see somebody create Old Comiskey Park in the game. Next up, let's talk about Metropolitan Stadium. Now, to be honest, I had heard of Metropolitan Stadium, but I didn't have a ton of memories of it, to be honest. And it's kind of crazy, right? Because the Twins didn't move into the Metrodome, which is already in the game, until like 1982. This was, you know, this is where the Vikings and the Twins played. Um, until it was closed. So it was open for 20 years. And we, you know, with the Vikings, we're talking about old school Joe Cap, Bud Grant <laughs> type of Chuck Foreman, Purple People Eaters, Alan Page, you know, that Jim Marshall, those guys way, way back, you know, type of um, the Vikings. But the Twins, the early Twins players uh, play here. Harmon Killebrew's 500 home run was here. Uh, Rock Rue won seven batting titles there. Harmon Killebrew hit a 520-foot home run at Metropolitan Stadium in 1967. So, yeah, it's some some cool stuff happened there. Uh, it was uh, demolished in 1985. Uh, it was pretty balanced of, as far as dimensions. Uh, they actually moved the fences back down the left field and right field line, which was kind of a little bit uncommon, especially at that time. Uh, but left field, 343, 330 down the right field line, 402, uh, uh, the straightaway center field. That's where it was. Um, ultimately, like once it was, you know, that was the final spot where it was. It's weird because the location of the ballpark is where the Mall of America is now. So if you're familiar with Minnesota, you know what I'm talking about there. But uh, yeah, I would love to see Metropolitan, someone rebuild Metropolitan Stadium. I have to pull up some, some, some pictures to get a really good look at it but there's a lot of them out there so it shouldn't be too hard some of them is when they were actually in the midst of demolition so that probably won't help too much but there's some part there's some images out there for people who need reference next up we're going to talk about memorial stadium this is this is my first look at the orioles you know this is my first look of them you know this is where i you know the first place i ever saw them play and also the Baltimore Ravens played here I think maybe like their first year or something like that before they got their own stadium uh, but this park was pretty balanced 309 down the lines 405 to straightaway center field they brought the fences in just a little bit but when you say when for me when you say this park the first thing that I think about is Kyle Ripken Jr. Uh, because Kyle Ripken they moved to Oriole Park at Camden Yards or Camden Yards they went going through I don't know how many different name changes they moved there Cal Ripken was already a star, you know. So my first memories of the Orioles is is, is Cal Ripken and Eddie Murray and, and those guys coming up and Ken Singleton uh, with the o Orioles. So the World Series was there in 66, 69, 70, 71, 79, 83. So all for y'all that not old enough to remember, the, the Orioles used to be that deal in the 70s. <laughs> they were that deal. They were like... The pitching staff was crazy. Jim Palmer, Scott McGregor, Tippy Martinez. Uh, they had some, you know, uh, uh, Quayar. They just had a bunch of Mike Boddicker. They had a bunch of great pitchers in the 70s and late eight, uh, early 80s. Um, but they haven't been good for a very long time. <laughs> Hall of Fame manager Earl Weaver. Who remembers Earl Weaver baseball? Crazy thing that we're bringing up Earl Weaver baseball is we're talking about this particular game because Earl Weaver baseball is the first baseball game I ever knew that allowed you to create your own stadium. And it was an old school PC game. Look that up if you don't know what I'm talking about. So, yes, would love to see Memorial Stadium. Pretty bland park overall, but like I said, it's all about that nostalgia. All right, next up. Now, this one's going like, I don't, you might be a big time baseball fan, but this one still might go straight over your head. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I had no idea what this was before I started doing this research. The Palace of the Fans in Cincinnati opened in 1902, closed in 1911. This park is so ridiculously built. Like, it looks like something out of medieval times. Like, you're supposed to be watching people fight lions and 
and and and Russell Crowe is gonna come out the back and go, "Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained?" I mean, it just that's what it looks like you are gonna see here. It's crazy, but that's why I really would love to see somebody make this in the game. Twelve thousand people is all it seated. The dimensions were insane. Like, I don't even know how anybody hit a home run if there wasn't a right-handed power hitter and you had to tag it pretty good there. 360 down the left field line, 400 feet to straightaway center field. And if you was a left-handed power hitter, ask to be traded. Just ask. Just ask to be traded because you were not, you, you're you going to be a doubles hitter. 450 down the right field line. Like, I have just, yeah, somebody please create the palace of the fans and you have to call it the Palace of the Fans because that whole thing is just really... I don't know if this is really the Palace of the Fans because it doesn't look like there's a lot of great seats here as I'm just looking at these pictures, but I, I, I want to see it. I want to see somebody create the Palace of the Fans. Next up, Olympic Stadium. I told you about another uh, Canadian ballpark. This is where the, the Expos play, which of course is now the Washington Nationals. Opened in 1977, closed in 04. It's still standing. Um, if Montreal ever got a baseball team back, this is probably where they played like their first season or something until their new ballpark got built. Um, this ballpark cost five hundred million dollars to build. That is really something, and it had a crazy bunch of crazy dimensions. The wall was just so it wasn't like straight across. Like so, it's three twenty five down the left field line, three seventy five to left to left center, four oh four to straightaway center field, three seventy five to right center, and three seventy down the right field lines. So you had to tag. You had to slap the taste out of the ball just to get it out, especially the right field. It, yeah, it was crazy. But the Expos, man, they had, they had some great players, man. They really had some great players. Vladimir Guerrero's career started there. So uh, also did Pedro Martinez. Um, so also did Randy Johnson. Um, Pete Rose got his 4,000th hit there. Tony Green got his 3,000th hit there. But Andre Dawson, like, he became one of my favorite players when he got to the Cubs, won the MVP in 87. But truth be told, he had a fantastic career from 87, from 76 to 86 playing with the Expos. Tim Raines was on those teams. Tim Wallach was on his teams. Tim Wallach's kids like in the league right now. Um, they had they had a, a Al Oliver, Gary Carter before he went to the Mets. They had a whip, Dennis Martinez. Uh, they had a great team. Another, like I said, bland looking park, but it's the whole nostalgia. I'm going to tell you something else, too. Uh, Marquise Grissom, Delano the Shields, Delano the Shields' daughter's in the WNBA right now. Uh, his son's playing in the major leagues. Those jerseys that they had right before they, the road jerseys, the road jerseys was that deal. Like they were awesome we need to see those too like i think you can wear those i think you can use those as alternate uh uniforms uh if you pick the nationals but yeah the e expos old jerseys were, were fire we need olympic stadium all right riverfront stadium i hated this park all the time and be just i because i never liked the reds so if we got any reds fans on here i apologize in advance uh, the only time I ever liked the Reds was 1990 because I really liked Eric Davis. And so they got hot, won the World Series in 1990. Eric Davis was like one of my favorite players, but I didn't like the Reds. I just liked Eric Davis. March shot probably had a lot to do with that, but you know, that's a whole other thing. But obviously, this Riverfront Stadium, they had arguably the greatest baseball team to ever, ever play, uh, play, play here. They went to the World Series in 70, 72, 75, 76, and 90. That 75 team, 76 team right there in that whole deal. Hank Aaron hit his 714th home run at Riverfront Stadium. Um, Joe Morgan, rest in peace, won MVP in 75 and 76. And P. Rose, I believe, got his last hit, the 4,192nd hit there. Uh, this is the big red machine. Johnny Bench won two MVPs there. Um, ballpark was built in 70 and demolished in 02, 330 down the left field line, 4, 404 to straightaway center field, um, 330 down the right field line. They brought the fences in a little bit, um, but pretty much the same. It was, the, it, the the park was directly west of where Great American Ballpark is. And I, I really like Great American Ballpark, uh, but Riverfront has a certain type of nostalgic charm and we need somebody to build that in MLB The Show. Another stadium along that same lines is the Veterans Stadium. So it was it was a lot of turf. 
back in the day. It really was. That was the thing. Uh, Veteran Stadium, where the Phillies played and the Eagles played for a while, they were known for really bad turf. People getting really, like, really hurt there. I remember a Bears wide receiver, Wendell Davis, was a really good wide receiver, too. I'm talking about, like, the Bears don't have a great history of, of big time wide receivers. But Wendell Davis was on his way to having, you know, being pretty solid on the same play because it's the way his feet got caught in the turf at Veteran Stadium. It was real bad. So, but <laughs> hopefully that won't happen on MLB The Show. Park opened in 71. It was uh, closed in 03. They knocked it down in 04. 330 to left, 330 to right, 408 to straightaway center field. Um, Yeah, this was... um where mike schmidt played pete rose in his later time von hayes uh larry boa this is where ryan sandberg started his career before he got traded to the phillies yvonne de jesus who came over in that trade from the cubs was a swap there you had gary maddox gary matthews bobby denier was there one time before he ended up coming to the to the cubs uh steve carlton took mcgraw uh it was the Phillies was like my brother's favorite team back in the day. Uh, so I knew this team backwards and forwards. And those old baby blue uniforms with the red P on them. Yeah, that all of that just reminds me of Veterans Stadium. We need that. We need that. We need that in the game. Somebody's got to create that. All right, I got two more. The next one is Tiger Stadium. Tiger Stadium, that straightaway center field porch, 440. And that's where it was at the end. Now, when they first built it, it was 467 to straightaway center field, 370 to right field, 345 to left. At the end, it was 340 to left, 325 down the right field line. I loved being able to, when I would see people hit one on the roof in left field, that was just dope. Like Cecil Fielder banging those joints on the roof was crazy. The upper deck shots, like they don't really just build stadiums that look like this anymore. And this just screamed baseball to me now i did not like the tigers i really did not like the tigers at all i like cecil fielder but i really didn't like was never like a jack morris fan he can't you know was there really good years there dan petrie you know lance Parrish. lance Parrish was cool but wasn't like a daryl evans fan lou Whitaker was okay i liked alan trammell but it's yeah i don't know i just but the park is fantastic the park is great you 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 need that you need this in your life just and i mean you want to talk about just crazy history like they it opened in 1912 and closed in 1999 everybody played there sparky anderson al k line just you name it whoever you want to talk about who's ever been great in tiger's history just about play the tiger stadium you cannot not create this this is one of the parks that i wished have been wishing more than anything was in um MLB the show there was an all-star game here I can't remember what year it was but Reggie Jackson was playing for the Oakland A's and he hit a home run that hit one of these light fixtures up here um it was like if you just watch it just YouTube it you'll see what I'm talking about it was crazy and that was like, like I said it's the nostalgia thing the look of the park was really dope too straightaway center field was forget about it and we need that my last one Three River Stadium. I know the Pirates fans are like, I know you ain't going to leave out Three River Stadium. No, I can't. The Pirates, I've always loved the Pirates. Um, always loved the Pirates. I'm not more than the Cubs, so let's not get crazy. But I always loved the Pirates. Just everything about them. Um, Willie Stargell, Omar Marino, Manny Sanguin, Tony Pena, Johnny Ray, Kent Tocovey, John Candelaria, Jason Thompson at, right, at first base after Stargell. Just yeah i dug me some pirates man dave parker yes yes mike easler i dug the pirates i did they just was something about them was cool it was just something was, and all of that that memory is three rivers like the whole you know just this pnc it just looks dank to me like i know it's a better park and all that but you just look at these pictures of of, of three rivers and you're like that's what i'm talking about that's like for me, that's like baseball. So 335 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 400 feet straight away center field. Um, the Steelers played here. I'm talking about this is where the Steelers was. The Steel Curtain was. This is Franco Harris, Mel Blount, Jack Lambert, Jack Ham, L.C. Greenwood, Joe Green, Chuck Noll, just that old Donnie Shell, 
Rocky Blyer. This is this is you know what I'm saying. This this is '80s '90s sports, and I need that. I need somebody's got to create that for me and just dedicate it to me when you do. This was a long video, but I had fun. I really appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if I left out a ballpark that you think definitely needs to be recreated in MLB The Show. Put it in the in in the comment section. Uh, looking forward to MLB The Show April twentieth. I appreciate you watching as always. God bless and peace.